of the girls. Some of them are more aggressive, some of them not that aggressive. But a history of failure has tell, told us how we need to be more strategic in fighting this war on drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand proudly on side proposition on, this, on the motion that we're debating today. This house would eradicate drug crops as a supply reduction strategy. And let me, t let me tell you how my speech will be built upon. Uh, I will start by uh, emphasizing on the mechanism we're going to use. I will move on to state the criteria that should prevail in this debate. And then I will move on to present my arguments. The mechanism that we're going to use will be forced crop shifting with state protection. How are we going to do this? We're going to, to, to seize the, the, the farmers who, are, who produce uh, um, drug crops and we're going to make them shift and we're going to provide support for them to shift to other crops. We're going to call these lands state protected lands but because they will be working with the collaboration and the supervision of the state in order to protect them. The criteria that should prevail throughout this debate will be that we have to show that there will be an ultimate tangible benefit for civil society. Now I will move on to my arguments. First we can see that farmers are, are actually coerced to plant these drug crops. It is a blatant lie that many people have, that many people have been telling that farmers are actually their source of income are these drug crops. Actually, major drug lords are the ones who go to these farmers and tell them you have to no thank you you have to plant my crops or else I will have you and your whole family executed. And guess what will their choice be? Well, we have seen that how how these farmers are actually in this particular scenario the victims of what uh, of what drug crops are essentially based upon we have see, seen that actually drug dealers have been uh, have been doing a pretty good job because obviously their aim is to remain underground and to put the farmers out there who are legally the owners of the crops and then on 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 on, on the underground then coerce them into doing their the, the, the drug businesses, but you seem to disagree, sir. You mentioned that the state is going to be protecting individuals, yet if the state has no institutional capacity... Okay, thank you, I get your question. Now, if you are going to, to question this, the, the authority of the state, then why are we here debating over on which policies, on which policies we ought to implement if the state has no, uh, no, no power whatsoever? then this is just ridiculous for me to stand here and defend a motion where the state has no power. So I believe that the state, yes, it does have the power to implement policies, and yes, this is why we're standing here and debating on which policies it is meant to be uh, advocating for. Then we will see that uh, also in agriculture, and if we take a good look in agri into agriculture, we can see that there is a necessity for crop shifting. When a, when a land does not experiment crop shifting after a, period of, uh, after a period of time, then the land becomes sterile. And who is the victim again? The poor farmers. But not only the farmers, it's because, because many societies still depend on agriculture. So we, we see the need to make these agricultural spaces um, effective for society. And therefore we need to promote crop shifting and we need to promote the economy of these farmers and the state's economy as well. <clears throat> uh, then we believe that this, will, this mechanism will be the first step if we eventually want to decriminalize drugs because we will have successfully taken away the supply from the mafia and this allows to further regulate. Many of the counter arguments against decriminalization is that we're giving complete power to the black market to, to execute whatever, whatever price or whatever costs they, they want to, uh, to, to meet their uh, demand. We also think that if we further want to legalize, we, we, we think that uh, uh, eradicating drug crops as a supply reduction will be a successful first step because they, this ensures that the government will have complete supply, supply control, control since the beginning. So before we think of legalizing uh, the, the, the market of drugs, we will have, uh, we will have uh, successfully controlled the supply and then the state can further have full, full control of this, of, 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 uh, of, no thank you, of this, uh, of this whole market. And that is one of the problems that actually legalization is facing. How are we going to make sure that another black market doesn't pop out with, with, with cheaper prices uh, while the government is busy on taxation and 
harm reduction and quality consumption. And then they would offer drugs that are actually essentially more expensive. And then the black market has all the way to go to keep on coercing farmers in order to produce uh, a, a cheap drug that is more accessible and then pop out again a black market. Well, with this mechanism, we're actually reducing this harm. We're actually effectively uh, taking the supply from the drug dealers and if we further want to take other measures and change the legal framework around, uh, uh, around uh, drugs, we're sure that we now have more control over these. And we think that this is the most efficient solution and some, one solution that we urge to implement directly. We have seen how other, other more aggressive mechanisms, like that of crop spraying or that of, uh, of, of, uh, of taking uh, fields or burning fields of marijuana, have, not, have proven no benefits whatsoever because this only leaves uh, sterile fields that need, that, 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 that need to, to, to be uh, reconstructed and, um, and, uh, and essentially uh, also uh, leads to infections and diseases to be widespread and farmers uh, left without any fields to work in. And uh, we, we have seen how this mechanism is the safest and we can see also inside proposition and inside opposition because they have barely raised any points of information challenging this mechanism. So we can see that uh, we in both parts of this uh, pa uh, panel agree that this measure should be and it is the, the, the best way to address this, pro this, this, uh, uh, this uh, problem, this drug problem that we're having right now. And we have seen how it, this is the first step that we need to take in order to ensure that the governments will have control. They will have control all, all, all over a drug market that is now clearly out of the hands of those who actually matter, which is the civil society. And, and that is what the government needs to be looking for. Thank you. It's interesting that the Prime Minister, or the first member of the proposition, starts off her speech and ends her speech by telling us effectively the same thing, that the goal here is for the government to have control. She tells us, in response to my POI, that, well, you know, the government can enforce the policy, otherwise we wouldn't be standing here having this debate. We think it's clear that while you can fiat the existence of a particular policy, you can't fiat the existence of the conclusions of that policy. For example, it's easy to say that we can like have the war in Iraq and build a state after and that's going to be really successful, but we cannot control those outcomes in this sort of debate. We cannot say that the outcome of this debate is always going to be the exact outcome that they wish to predict. So insofar as you can't fiat the future, we would tell you on our side of the house that they have absolutely no solvency, no ability to make what they want come true, this goal of state control, in terms of there is not any institutional capacity to enforce these types of restrictions. I'm going to tell you the harms of that after I give you a few points of rebuttal. So first we get this idea, right, that, well, farmers are currently coerced. We would say, absolutely. So why do you not discuss the main stakeholder here, that of the cartels, who we presume on our side of the house are not going to be quite interested in your state protection strategy, right? We think it's very unrealistic for you to assume the cartels are just going to be like, well, oh well, we're going to move on to another industry because the cartels have the main interest in this cash crop. No, we think it's more problematic that you ignore this stakeholder because realistically, you're only going to make the relationship between the cartels and the government substantially more adversarial. And this just isn't hypothetical, right? We have a case study for this. It's Colombia, right? You can see the FARC as a very good example of an adversarial enemy towards the government of Colombia after these very policies were introduced. Although we tried to crop spray, the principle behind these policies is exactly the same as Plan Colombia, and we think it very clearly the result is going to be the same. Right, so let's talk about some constructive disadvantages here, right? First, I'm going to tell you that supply reduction doesn't work. Second, I'm going to talk about human rights violations. And third, I'm going to talk about the moral burden of putting a disproportionate uh, solution, especially on producer countries rather than on individuals who actually consume these, uh, these drugs in the first place. So first, why supply reduction doesn't work? Well, let's take a look at what happened in Colombia when we tried to reduce supply, right? Not only did crop spraying not work, but the very principle is flawed. You cannot take a global commodity, which effectively the war on drugs is trying to do, and expect that commodity to somehow not continue to be produced. You might localize the consumption, you might be able to locally disrupt, disrupt production, but you're not going to disrupt production in the long run. So the idea of protecting people within your state isn't going to happen, nor is it going to reduce the consumption, as we saw in Colombia when things moved further south, when they started crop spraying, or engaged in any sort of, try to, of supply reduction strategy. Go ahead. 
Well, actually, the harms that were propagated in Colombia were because they were er aggressively eradicated, and the real harm was against the people who had no farm to work on and the, the widespread diseases. Okay. okay. The problem is the principle is the same, right? No matter where you're trying or how you're trying to eradicate these crops, the fact is, the crops still were produced in Colombia in areas where they were not be being sprayed. You're not going to be able to cover the entirety of the country with this type of program, unless you're effectively saying you're going to take every farmer and subsidize them so that they don't grow certain types of crops. It's unrealistic to assume that you're going to be entirely efficacious at, in, in, at like starting this type of program. Moreover, we would tell you that eradication actually makes the problem worse, right? Because on one hand, you have the cartel fights the government so they can still produce these drugs. On the other hand, you have another scenario where they can just move on to other industries. What are those other, other industries? Human trafficking, violence against pretty much anybody, indiscriminate violence. We've seen this as well with cartels in Mexico who switched to arms trafficking when the production of drugs was restrained. This is the type of policy that you engender, right? Because you don't target the root of the problem, you never target the cartels who actually fund the drug production, who you yourself say fund the drug production, and because of that, you never solve the problems within your country. So your two goals, which you eventually told us were here to protect the, the people and produce the best possible outcome for the state, the most tangible benefit, are never achieved. Go ahead if you have one. So we, are, uh, we believe that our uh, mechanism is not mutually exclusive to actually contain the activities of the cartel instead of attacking them by force, that is the failed mechanism that has prevailed on and on and on. Right, so proposition is going to do everything for you today. They're going to solve the war on drugs, they're going to expect the entire country to eradicate all the all cartels, up. and they're going to do this by fiat, except rather than telling you how they're actually going to do it. No, we think this is problematic. <laughs> So, now let's talk about the human rights violations that are going to occur. We think like we've already seen this, right? We've seen mass migration as a result of cartel or violent gang-related incidents. We've seen 70,000 unaccompanied minors flow into the United States from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras this year alone. Why has that occurred? Violence. The very same violence which they promote on their side of the house. Secondly, they want to talk about access to livelihood. I think it's extremely unrealistic to say they're going to be able to access their livelihood if they're forced to flee the country. I don't think this is a realistic understanding of the way that these policies actually function. Supply reduction has failed in Colombia, it has failed in Mexico, and pretty much all of Latin America. It has failed in Afghanistan. You can see the Taliban in 2000 tried to restrict the production. They weren't really successful at doing it because they had local buy-in. But then when Westerners tried to implement the same policy and tried to get rid of the Taliban, production came back. It's going to come back, it's going to be displaced, and you're not going to get that sort of solution that you're looking for. Thirdly, let's talk about the disproportionate burden on producing countries. Because that's something that I think I really want them to engage with. Because it's a principal distinction here, right? If their goal, and I'm not saying it's the right goal, is to end the uh, idea of produ product, if their goal is to end the consumption or production of drugs, then why do they place the entirety of the burden on countries which have low institutional capacity, like those in Latin America? Why do they place the entirety of the burden on poor farmers and expect subsidies to be the only way by which they can access the global market? We would tell you that it's principally unfair to expect these countries to bear the entirety of the burden for the war on drugs. It is principally unacceptable to say, look, well, we've got a problem with drugs in the West, we might as well go look at poor countries and expect them to solve the problem for us. The only way they're going to solve this problem is not by local funding, because they don't have it, but by external funding. And where does that external funding come from? It comes from the United States. It comes from the European Union. The very same funding that prevents the institutional capacity from ever being developed in the first place. What I'm telling you is that these types of policies perpetuate a cycle of inability to implement any sort of domestic or local reform that would actually control drug policies. Not even, I'm not even gonna talk about the difficulties here about potentially getting towards legalization, right? Because if they really want, wanted that goal, they wouldn't be trying to essentially get rid of the entirety of the supply of drugs from their country. Where do they expect to get it in the future if they want to legalize it? It doesn't make any sense at all. So what have I told you today? Supply reduction doesn't work, eradication has failed, there's a disproportionate burden on producers, and you're gonna make the problem substantially worse. Proud to oppose. interesting to hear the opposition team says supply, supply reduction, reduction doesn't work. And it, and it is also so interesting for him to say eradication has failed. But I tell you today, we have a plan. And I'm here today to talk about the plan we have. What is the plan we have? The plan we have is that we are, we are just going to um, come, come, uh, come up with a, with a policy. What is the policy? The policy is registration policy. 
I repeat, registration policy. What is the registration policy? We can tell the local farmers, basically, and we obviously, we know the local farmers are suffering from this problem. They are, they are the ones suffering from, 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 from the, um, from the um, global drug syndicates. They are the ones receiving the others, the others suffering, poverty, everything. Even the, uh, the, the, this drug syndicate doesn't even care if their if their crop is fat out. They don't care. All they care about is produce something for us. Produce something for us. But I tell you today we have a plan. What is the plan? The government can come up with the, with the policy. What is the policy? Register with us. When you register with us, we can solve this problem of crop of, 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 of this crop of this crop. What is the problem we have? We need to solve here. We need to do um, crop shifting. When we do crop shifting, these farmers won't suffer. They won't suffer because when there is crop shifting, there, there, there will be low threats. There will be there will be there will, there will be there will be low problem associated with this crop. And if there is crop shifting, this this production of mass 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 production of drugs will also reduce because when there is crop shifting, we will have just little production of drugs. We can do this crop shifting with some other things. What are the other things we can do this crop shifting with? We have rice. We have vegetables. We can do this crop shifting with them. All all this is to reduce the, the production of these crops. And by by reducing the production of these two. This gloves, it can be limited to the locality. It can be limited for local consumption. It would, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't go prior. It would, it, would, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't just go into the local. It wouldn't just go into the global economy. But it will be limited to the local for local use. And if it is limited for local use, I believe this is a way of solving this drug issue. I, I, I repeat again, we are not we are not we are not in support of spraying. Neither are we in support of burning force. We are not in support of spraying. Neither are we in support of burning force. But okay. Um, why would why would farmers rather serve it you when your yeah, why would farmers rather serve it you in the first place? I can't hear you. Why would farmers rather serve it you in the first place when you helping them with crop shifting and stuff like that? Sorry, I can I can I can't get you. You said farmers would register with you, right? That's the policy. Exactly. How, why would they register with you? Why? why? Why would the farmers register with you where you're providing? Exactly, exactly. Thank you for the question. Why would the farmers register with us? It is so easy, so, so, so easy for the farmers not to register with us. But if they don't register with us, you should, you should know that they will be victims of more, of, 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 of more manipulations from this global drug syndicate. They will be victims of manipulation. Just as my, 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 my partner said, my, my partner said, this, this, this global drug syndicate, they do something. What is the thing they do? They force local drug farmers to plant these crops for them. And they don't even care about how fertile the land is going to be. They just want the crops. They want the drug. They force them. But if they register with us, the government, it will be so, so, so easy to disband them from this global drug syndicate. It will be so, so easy, I repeat again, to disband them. And if they are disband, disband, banded from this local, from this global drug syndicate, that is a very good step, a very for good and first step to eradicating this. And it is also going to eradicate violence in which you are talked about. And I would like to emphasize on what my partner said. My partner said, in order to make this land more fertile and discourage, and, and my partner said, we need, we need, we need, we need to do this crop, crop um, shifting. Yes, 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 yes. We need to do this crop shifting because this land just needs to be fertile. This land needs to be fertile. And even if these local drug farmers, uh, these local drug farmers register with us, there they, will they'll, they'll, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be access for them to receive pro profits. They will have gains. They, they, don't, they don't have to suffer. Must they suffer? They are crop farmers. And we should, like, we should allow them to, 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 to plant these crops. We shouldn't destroy all the crops. We shouldn't spray. We shouldn't burn them. We should allow them. And just by, just by registering, and I'm very sure all farmers will register, because none of them want to deal with global dogs in the case. None of them want to, none of them want to live with the fear that one day their house will be burnt. None of them want to live with the fear that one day their family will die because, because they are dealing with global drug syndicate. They want to deal with the government because they know the government has, has the potential, has, your, has, 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 has the responsibility to protect them. The government are not going to threaten them. The government are not going to do anything. But all the government needs to do is protect them. And when we are protecting them is registering. That is a plan. That is a plan we are willing to implement. And I'm telling you today it is going to work. It's going to work very well. You want to ask a question. Do you not think that the intimidation your partner mentioned from cartels might prevent people from registering for your plan? 
I don't think so. I don't think so. That is one good way of protecting them. There is no better way of protecting these local farmers than registering with us. When they register with us, drug cartels can't even come because because when, when they have when they are intimidated by drug the, the cartels, they can easily come to the government and tell the government this thing I'm doing. Some drug cartels are intimidating me. I need security. I need this. I need that. And the government will do that. They will provide security for this for these local drug farmers. So this is one good way I think. The, the, the drug farmers can be protected. One good way, I think the drug farmers can be protected. I will say that again. I think I think I think that is that is just that is just one good the drug that is just one good plan that I've just laid down. What, what my opposition team is actually talking about is is there a plan? Is there a plan? Is there a plan? And I think I've been able to 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 convince so many people about the plan we have, and I think that is all for for me. Thank you very much. Right. So the proposition comes up and tells us that they have a plan. They have a plan where they're going to get. Uh, farmers to register with them for uh, enroll with them for crop shifting, right? That's what the plan is. And then you go on to tell us that you will provide them security from the drug cartels which are dominating their, uh, their, their farming uh, activities. We tell you that if the government was already in a position to uh, combat drug cartels, to protect these farmers from drug cartels, then they would have already uh, uh, protected the general public from them. There wouldn't have been a case of drug. Uh, of illicit drug trafficking anyway, right? If, if the government was already in a position to combat these uh, illegal drug cartels. Secondly, I, I'd like to rebut your points. Uh, sorry. Right. You you told us that the that the farmers will uh, en enroll uh, with the uh, with, with the government for, for for whatever reason you're telling us. We're telling you that they're making more money anyway by selling drugs to these drug traffickers. I agree that they're forced to. Uh, they already for that they may be forced to uh, grow these drugs, but then they are already making money by selling these drugs to these drug cartels, who in turn do pay them, who in turn do ensure that the drug cartels' livelihood, which depends on these farmers, so the farmers are well kept and they they are already earning a good amount of livelihood. So what additional incentive do you provide? Thirdly, you tell us that your long term goal is of legalization, right? If if your long term goal is of legalization. Then, uh, uh, then you you do have some plans to in, uh, to uh, regulate your your drug industry. It, but what what's the point of doing that when you're not when you're not in any case going to get any tax tax revenues from drugs because because there's no growth of drug uh, of uh, drug crops in the first place in the country. Later. Fourthly, is it is it is it feasible for every state to trace uh, these drug these farmers that, who, who are growing drug crops and try to and uh, uh, maybe force them to do this? Because you're not forcing them; you're just uh, telling them uh, you can come and register with us. You're not in any way ensuring that all the places in the country where drug crops are being grown uh, have actually been uh, uh, changed from drug drug crops growth to something else. You also tell us that the black market of drugs will probably reduce, and uh, because these drug cartels who are dealing with uh, drug crops can, can no longer have access to them. But we tell you that this will prove particularly problematic for the country in which this is happening, because there will be uh, there will be obvious instances where drug trafficking from other places, countries would uh, drug traffickers from other countries would enter your country, and they will be even more pro profitable because. When, when there is no uh, drugs available in, in a certain country, uh, the, the drug cartels who come in can afford to sell at a higher price and hence gain more revenues. So this puts this is the state at, uh, uh, at a risk of uh, drug cartels from other countries coming in and drug tra trafficking in increasing, uh, uh, increasing a, a, a lot of folks. For example, in India, you have African immigrants in Mumbai, you have Russians in Goa who like, control a lot of land, a, a lot of drugs being grown out there. So, so I, I don't see your plan working here. Yeah. But would you be willing to take that control of, 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 of growing crops there from the hands of the, the flood market? So I can hear you question. So would you be willing then in India, as you said in the example that you said, wouldn't you be a, a willing to take that control from them? 
Not really. Our, our aim at the end of the day is to end the drug bans, right? And if you're and if you're take, taking control, like if they already have control and you're not in a position to take control from them, the drug market continues to thrive. So I don't really see the issue here. Uh, a couple of new arguments that uh, we we can uh, come up with uh, that as opposition we've come up with are that if, if you actually stop drug crops being grown in the country, you would have more synthetic drugs and over the counter drugs being uh, used. The youth of the country and sorry, the technological ad ad advancements around the world have ensured that there are new synthetic drugs coming up at a very quick rate, and there's research going on in different countries, and that there are always th this illegal researchers who, who, who coming up with such drugs. So, and, and these drugs, uh, research on these drugs is, is not very uh, uh, advanced, right? So you don't really know the harms that these drugs may cause, the, the cost that which these drugs will be sold. So the black market in terms of these synthetic drugs and, and over-the-counter drugs where you get certain drugs without prescriptions which are legal uh, as such, uh, will, will continue to exist. And, and so you're not decreasing the harms to the society in, in, in any way possible. Secondly, uh, uh, I'd like to quote the example of India where licensing of certain lands uh, is, is done to farmers where, where they used to do, grow drug crops. Now why does India allow that? India allows that so that we have research and innovation for medicinal purposes of drug. Uh, opium, uh, the opium plant has plenty of, uh, sorry the poppy plant has plenty of uh, research medicinal purposes which it can serve in the future to, to, to with not, not only in the future, it, it is already proved to your certain ailments and it is used as a drug and it is used as an ingredient in certain drugs, uh, in certain medicinal drugs. So if you're stopping drug crops being grown, then how, then how do you deal with that? Okay, so we're not saying that drugs might have an adverse, adverse effect or not. We even propose that criminalization, legalization might be an aim. But we are saying that sometimes and many times and more often than not, farmers are actually coerced by drug dealers and we are going to actually fight that. Right, so what's the problem if farmers are being coerced and, and your local drug market is, is existing but they're, they're, but, they're, but then you're not solving the problem of getting drug traffickers from other countries who are actually dealing with such drugs. You're not solving the problems of synthetic drugs, you're not solving the problem of over the counter drugs. So the drug menace that you, that you want to solve in the first place continues to exist, right? We've also told you why uh, why supply reduction may not necessarily be the right way to deal with this because uh, I'm sorry. Then. Of on the proposition side to crystallize this debate and tell you what it has come down to. And first of all, I will answer the two questions that arise from the judges, and then I will move on to uh, to uh, summarize the debate. Uh, so, on, regarding the first question, what about drug crops for beneficial purposes? We believe that there are beneficial pur purposes that are already legal in most areas for medicinal and in in industrial research purposes and we believe that the government already has control over those and in this particular case they, it does not apply, uh, apply to our debate because our debate is fully fully uh, uh, drug cartel controlled crops where the farmers are coerced into growing these crops. Uh, moving on to the second um, question, a very good question that on, on demand, uh, where, whether we are displacing the supply. Uh, we believe that demand uh, reduction has also need to uh, also needs to work in parallel, but that is a measure that takes much longer to uh, be implemented because it has to do with education. We do believe that the, that we need to implement it, but regarding the supply part of the question, we believe that yes, we are displacing the supply. We're taking the supply from the dealers and we're taking. Uh, uh, to the to the government because our aim is ultimately to reach legalization where the government has control uh, uh, total control over the supply. So I would like to add, as part of the, the conclusion of this debate, two more questions that were uh, uh, prevailed in this debate: Is our mechanism based based on violence, and is there any institutional capacity? For the first question, uh, violence uh, uh, about violence, we address. 
a whole, the, uh, our whole speech on how aggressive measures actually do not work and how we need to take strategic measures that don't directly and militarily attack the uh, drug dealers like we're used to do. Uh, the examples that actually were given by, by the opposition were only relevant to these direct aggressive attacks given to these uh, 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 drug, uh, drug cartels, whereas in our mechanism we're never directly confronting these, uh, the, these uh, drug cartels, but rather we are doing implementing a strategic solution. Uh, then, uh, so uh, is, is our mechanism based on violence? No, it is not because we do not see how crop shifting can be really, really aggressive unless you pull the farmers from their, from their hair and tell them you have to ship your crop, but that is very unlikely. Then, our, is, is there institutional capacity whatsoever? <clears throat> we believe that there is. Why? Because if, 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 in, if Mexico was able to wage a 9 billion war on drugs, even if it was supported by the USA, there shall be, then we, we believe that there shall be enough funding for that. The, but then we believe that it is better to shift that, that, those funds onto a, a, a better purpose that will, uh, that, that will be uh, eliminating the supply from these cartels and well, we believe that we can use that money more, much more effectively and it will actually uh, show, show uh, benefits uh, right away instead of the war, uh, the war in Mexico has shown no benefits whatsoever. So if you make the math, then we, will can, we can see how the USA would actually be, would be more excited to fund a, 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 a campaign that will actually is, uh, can show more promising results than that, that, that aggressive and actually based, violence based campaign that has shown no results whatsoever. We can also, uh, and, and uh, extensively, opposition brought up the example of Colombia. Uh, we can see how there is also institutional capacity in Colombia because they successfully contain drug production to a very, very small area, this whole regime. And yes, it is, there is, uh, I, can, I can finally answer the question with yes, there is institutional capacity and it is, even in these countries and we believe that we will use institutional capacity in the right way instead of waging a war on drugs where we will be attacking drug cartels by force and that actually is based on violence. So ladies and gentlemen, how, how have we met the criteria so far? We have shown that uh, we are ultimately going to protect the population because we are implementing measures that are not violent and we're implementing measures that will show more, uh, more, more um, that, that will actually show uh, benefits in the long run because whenever we decriminalize drugs and whenever we legalize drugs, the cartels will not pop out with a new market that's cheaper. We will not expose our uh, citizens to, again, the, the will of the drug cartels, but we will actually give even more institutional capacity to governments and even more power to the governments to actually regulate this market because there, if there's no regulation and there is no control over this market, then suggesting that we should decriminalize it or legalize it is just not talking, talking nonsense. Thank you very much. debate that started out with the expropriation of private property that to state-owned forced crop uh, shifting plans, it certainly has taken an interesting turn. I'm going to respond to the questions from the panel first and then kind of conclude and summarize the debate that we've had. So, I mean, first, what do we suggest that we do if supply and demand side reduction programs have failed? I have two responses. First, I think the, the context is absolutely specific, as is indicated by your second question, right? If we're talking about circumstances like perhaps in Latin America, the, the, the strategies that we use are going to be very different. Uruguay has subsidized the production of marijuana in an attempt to try to undercut the black market. That's been an extremely effective strategy for them. Likewise, that strategy may not work in the United States or uh, another Western liberal democracy. But those types of strategies have been effective at actually accomplishing the goals that Proposition wishes to achieve. Secondly, though, in terms of harm minimization, I think we can have a long discussion about the value of these types of programs and the very little harms that are actually caused by them, right? In terms of harm minimization, we can reduce the menace that they talk about in terms of the war on drugs and in terms of the whole supply and, and production of drugs. Um, the second question, in terms of why not using crop eradication as part of a bigger strategy? 
Right. I think the context that they set out for this particular debate, and one that they specifically mention, is one where the cartels control the entirety of the area and coerce farmers. In this type of circumstance, I don't think that crop eradication is going to be an effective, or crop uh, eradication through crop shifting is effective because they don't deal with the actual underlying cause of the difficulties of having the cartels still in charge. Although crop eradication might be successful in some other places that aren't controlled by drug cartels, it certainly isn't going to be successful in this context. So, I have two questions to conclude and summarize this debate. Will crop shifting be effective at supply reduction? And second, does it get better or worse? I just want to note before I go into those that we have absolutely no response to whether this is principally a good idea, no response to this idea that cartels are not are still going to be involved, and no response at all whatsoever to many of the other arguments both me and my partner made. So, first, will crop shifting be an effective way to reduce supply? I told you that there's going to be displacement to other provinces and other countries. No response on from their side of the house. I told you that institutionally, there's no capacity to enforce. Their response is that Mexico's $9 billion drug war demonstrates a capacity to actually solve the problem. I will tell you, one, the majority of the individuals responding to the drug war were not actually Mexicans, but were American soldiers brought in to actually fight this war for them. That really coincides excellently with that story of institutional capacity that I told you about, where they don't have the ability to build their own when outside sources are coming in. But even if it's the case that they manage to obtain this type of funding and manage to obtain this institutional capacity from the outside, I don't think that's the actual solution, right? Because in that case, they're not making things tangibly more uh, tangibly beneficial, uh, the standard that they put out for you, because they're still destroying that institutional capacity which they're hoping to create. Trying to make their country a better place isn't going to happen. So secondly, does society get better or worse? They talk a lot about coercion. They talk a lot about specifically farmers being coerced. I'm unsure whether it's good or bad that the state is coercing farmers after instead of the cartels coercing farmers. Because what effectively they tell you is that farmers don't have the ability to make money by choosing the types of crops they wish to produce, right? I see no difference between the state making the handling the coercion and then the, the cartels handling the coercion, except the cartels are probably worse. When challenged with this idea of, like, are they going to register or are they not going to register, we told you that the very same violence they tell you is so endemic in these areas is the very same violence that's going to be perpetuated because they're not going to be, like, they're not going to register for these programs out of the fear of further ramifications from the cartels. They have not told you how they're going to eradicate cartels, eradicate that type of influence, and so on our side of the house, at least we tell you that, in our case, we're going to maintain the level of violence the way it is and not make it worse. On our side of the house, we further tell you that the violence and the loss of human capital that's caused when you have a mass exodus of people caused by some sort of very large rival between, rivalry between the cartels, who are still very much stakeholders in the situation, and the government, which is trying to solve this problem, the loss of human capital, first off, means that you don't get any of that institutional development that you really want, you don't get any sort of reduction of violence, and you get the exact same thing I've already told you about, right? That whole eradication of a large part of your society when they flee as refugees to other more developed countries. This has already happened, ladies and gentlemen. This is not some sort of hypothetical thing. When violence, perpetu when violence is perpetuated through a type of through a country that has already had a history of violence, making it worse doesn't solve the problem. So, essentially, what have we really told you today? We've told you that crop shifting might be effective in some places, but it's certainly not effective in the context at which they set this debate. It is certainly not going to produce the standard that they want, right? The tangible benefit to society. We told you that it has no effect either on the global production of drugs. We've told you that society is not going to be better or worse in terms of reducing this farmer coercion. We've told you that violence is going to get worse. We've told you that people are going to leave the country and flee the very country you're trying to protect. We think that ultimately, though, principally, there's still this big problem of why you're placing the burden on less developed countries to take entirely the war on drugs and be responsible entirely themselves for eradicating that supply. We think there's no response to this argument, and unfortunately, we really want to know why the less developed countries ultimately are continuing to pay the price for what is effectively a demand problem in the West.